Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How To with Beardy Thinker. Today we are going to play with thresholds. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I would really like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Your support means a lot and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's get back to video. Threshold integration or threshold binary sensor allows you to track the state of another sensor. If the value of the other sensor is below or higher than the one you specified, then this will change the state of the binary sensor. Of course, for this you can also use template binary sensor and pull the value template out, but it's much easier to just use integration that is already existing inside the Home Assistant. This binary sensor can be used to track anything. Simple and most basic use of this binary sensor is if you are using HVAC or heating, ventilation and air conditioning system. You could have one sensor, temperature sensor, inside your living room, and you can have two thresholds. One is below certain temperature and the other one is above certain temperature. This way the same sensor could trigger two different events. One is to start heating when the temperature falls below certain threshold and the other one is to start cooling when the temperature rises above the threshold. In order for us to configure this, what we have to do is we have to open up our Visual Studio code or file editor or configurator or whatever text editor you are using to edit your YAML files. Let's open up file editor and we need to add or create a new binary sensor inside our binary sensor file. So let's click on browse file system and binary sensor. As you can see, I do use a value template sometimes in my binary sensors. This is my test setup or recording setup, so not much is here, but in my production setup or the setup I'm using at my house, I'm using binary sensor to trigger when the air particles are above or when they are rising. Let's start configuring threshold binary sensor. First thing that I always do is I always give a name, so this one will be threshold. And the integration for the threshold platform is very easy. All we have to do is we have to type in platform. And we have to call the integration threshold. Next thing that we need to specify is the name of the sensor, entity ID, that we want to track and that we want to create binary sensor from. So this will be entity ID and sensor for me will be living room temperature. The third and the last parameter that we need to give to this integration is if we are going to use lower or upper threshold. We'll create both of them. So let's type here lower and we will give here a number. As we are now tracking the temperature and we want to have a lower value, let's say that anything below 21 degrees or yeah, 21 degrees, so number will be 21, we consider to be uh, too cold for us and we want to ignite or we want to start the heating. If you are creating multiple binary sensors, best practice of course is to name it and we will be giving it a name that we can understand and find much easier later. Living room to cold. This is now all done. We have created new threshold binary sensor. It will be triggered when the temperature falls below 21 degrees. There is also optional field and optional field is called hysteresis. I hope I pronounced it correctly. This allow us to specify the distance between the value we get from the sensor and the threshold before the state is changed. If you have very small oscillations, let's say that our temperature is fluctuating between 20.8 and 21.1 degrees and you do not want this sensor to change every time it falls for just 
0.1 degree or 0.4 degrees. So you can specify here this value. It will be H Y S T E R E S I S hysteresis. And the value, for example, could be one 0.7, meaning that even if the value now goes below 21, we still wouldn't trigger binary sensor to change until it falls additional 0.7 Celsius in this case. I will remove this one. I will not be using it. And next, let's create additional binary sensor, threshold binary sensor. Now looking for the upper or higher value of the threshold. Platform. Threshold. Once again, we will be using same entity ID and the ID sensor leaving room temperature. To track the higher value, we need to specify here upper and the value for the upper sensor. So let's say I want this to be at 24.5. Let's give it a name. Living room too hot. And let's save this. Now we have created two new binary sensors based on the threshold integration. One will be looking for the values lower than and the other binary sensor will be changing state depending on the upper values of this same sensor. Let's go to configuration. Server control check configuration. And let's restart our home assistant. As I said, you of course still have option to use template binary sensor to pull the state of the sensor and to track if the value is higher, lower or equal to some other value. I use those mathematical values in, in some of my other sensors. But using threshold is much cleaner because you are using built-in integration with the correct binary sensor state. Of course, there is nothing wrong with you keep on using the template binary sensor. Okay, Home Assistant is up. We are still waiting for some components to be loaded. Let's go to Overview. Fun stuff. And we can now add those binary sensors to our UI. Configure UI, plus sign, entities, and we will be adding living room to cold and living room to hot. Okay. Let's save this. And as you can see, we now have two temperature binary sensors. One is living room is too cold and the other one is living room too hot. Too cold binary sensor has state off and too hot has state on. As we have created two separate sensors, for the too hot we can see that the state currently is in the above position. Sensor value is 25.05. Type is upper and the value of upper is 24.5. This is the value we've set for this sensor. You of course have additional option on how you can configure it. Let's go to file editor. If you do not want to track lower or upper, but you want to track both of them, what you could do is create one binary sensor. and track both values. Let's save this. Let's go to configuration, server control check configuration, and let's restart our server. Home Assistant is back up. We are still waiting for some components to load. Let's go to overview, fun stuff.
And now, as you can see, we can now see that our binary sensor is in the position above because the current sensor value is above our upper threshold. If you are interested in making some kind of optimal values, let's say that you are once again tracking temperature or you have light sensor in your living room tracking the light intensity, you could, for example, say that anything between, let's say, 22 degrees and 25.5 degrees is living room optimal temperature. Let's save this. This now means that we are now tracking for the binary sensor both upper and uh, lower value. And if the status of the sensor is between those two numbers, the binary sensor will be on, saying that we are between those two threshold values. Let's test this. Let's go to configuration, server control, check configuration, and let's restart. Using both values, as I said, can be great to track the humidity, temperature, light intensity, and things that have some kind of optimal value. Tracking the quality of air, for example, the particle matters PM2.5 or P8. 10 or CO2 values or VOC values usually requires you to having only upper or lower values, meaning that you want to have something not more than something else in the air. And if we now go to overview, we see the temperature has been loaded from the integration. We can go to fun stuff. We have to edit this because we changed the name. Now this is called optimal. Okay, save. And we can see that now we have living room optimal temperature. This sensor is on because position of the binary sensor or position of the values is in range, meaning between the lower and the upper value we specified. As you can see, this is very simple integration, but also very powerful, allowing you to track values between the range, above the range or below the range. It all depends on for what purpose you want to use them and what sensors you are using. This is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Beard Tinker. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.